The next one is the euglenoids. For example, euglena. Euglenoids are those living creatures which is present in the fresh water. And when I say fresh water, it is exclusively present in the stagnant water. That is the water which is constant, which is not moving. So euglenoids are present in the fresh water, especially when the water is stagnant in nature. And how is the body of this euglenoids or the euglena? The cell wall is absent. So, if there is a presence of cell wall, the body becomes extremely rigid. But if you have observed, the body of the euglena is extremely flexible in nature. Why is it flexible is because of the absence of the cell wall and the entire body is covered by a layer of a protein. And the name of this protein is called as pellicle. So, pellicle covers the entire body of the euglena as a result of which the body becomes very flexible in nature. How about the flagella? Flagella is also present but they are two in number. One flagella is very short and another flagella is very long. And what is the purpose of flagella? Flagella helps for locomotion. The usually the small flagella it is present inside the cell and it does not protrude out of the cell. It is mainly the long flagella which helps for its movement. And the euglena it is autotrophic that means to say it can synthesize its own food but in the presence of sunlight. What if there is no sunlight? At that point of time, euglena is not able to produce its own food. It has got the chlorophyll which is just similar to that of a plant. What if there is no sunlight, it will not be able to make the food. At that point of time, euglena changes its behavior. They have two flagella. One is short and one is long. The short flagella, it does not usually protrude out of the cell. It is mainly with the help of this long flagella, they have this locomotion. And how about with respect to the mode of nutrition? Euglena has got the chlorophyll which is just similar to that of a plant. So they can synthesize their own food with the help of sunlight. But what if there is no sunlight? At that point of time, it changes its behavior and it acts like a heterotrophic organism. So, euglena, it changes its behavior and it acts like a heterotrophic organism by predating upon the other living organisms. So, it kills the other living organisms and it eats that. So, this is how the euglena survives. So this is the characteristic features of the living organisms which comes under euglenoid and the example is euglena. So the next one is the slime molds. Slime molds, it comes under the kingdom protista. Slime molds as the name indicate, it is very slimy in nature and it is present in the region where it is extremely damp or wet. And the slime molds are extremely saprophytic in nature. Saprophytic means those organisms which feed upon the dead and decayed organic matter. So they engulf those region where they find any dead or decomposed or any sort of organic matter and then they form an aggregate and when they form an aggregate you call them as plasmodium and this plasmodium can stretch up to several feet. So when there is a normal temperature when the environment is friendly then this plasmodium thrive very well. But what happens when there is an unfavorable condition? 
when the environmental conditions are not favorable at that point of time the slime molds they convert themselves into spores now what are spores spores are round shaped structure and this round shaped structure is extremely resistant to any sort of changes in case of environment so when the favorable environmental comes then this spore it germinates and give rise to new slime molds and this spores can be dispersed through air currents because it is very light in nature it can be dispersed to from one place to another place So the fifth one is protozoans. Protozoans can be heterotrophs. Heterotrophs means it can be a predator or it can be a parasite. Predator means a living organism which is hunting upon another living organisms. It is killing the other living organism and consuming it. Parasite means here one living organism is living inside the body of another living organisms. So one is the host and another one is the parasite. Parasite is living inside the body of the host. So this is called as parasitism. And heterotrophs are of two type predators and parasite now there are four different types of protozoans the first one is amoeboid protozoans the second one is ciliated protozoans third one is flagellated protozoans and the fourth one is sporozoans so first let's study about amoeboid protozoans amoeboid protozoans they can be either the freshwater or the marine water one or even they can live in the soil. Amoeboid protozoan they capture the prey or they kill the prey with the help of pseudopodia. Pseudopodia means false feet. So amoeboid protozoan they hunt the other living organisms with the help of pseudopodia. Example for the amoeboid protozoan is amoeba some protozoans are also parasitic in nature so some amoeboid protozoan which are parasitic in nature the example is ant amoeba so ant amoeba histolytica is an another amoeboid protozoan but this is parasitic in nature even you can find the amoeboid protozoan which is in marine in nature and those protozoan will have the silica as their cell wall covering. The next one is the flagellated protozoans. The flagellated protozoan it can be a free living one or even it can be a parasitic one. And as the name indicates this protozoans have got the flagella in them and this flagella helps for them in their locomotion purpose. And an example for the parasitic flagellated protozoan is the trypanosoma. Trypanosoma. It is a parasitic flagellated protozoan which causes disease called as sleeping sickness. So it causes a disease called as sleeping sickness.
The next one is the ciliated protozoans. Example is Paramecia. The, as the name indicates that this living organisms, the body is completely covered by cilia. So, the entire body is covered by cilia and this cilia helps for the movement. Along with this, the cilia also helps for the food and the water to enter inside their body. For example, in case of paramecium, there are many food vacuoles which are present. And this food vacuoles, you can even call it by the name gullet. So, this is called as gullet or a cavity through which the food and the water enters inside. And through the coordinated movement of the cilia, the food and the water is able to enter, enter inside the cavity which finally reaches the gullet or the food vacuoles. The next one is the sporozoans. Sporozoans are nothing but a spore like stage in their life cycle and this particular spore like stage it is highly infectious for example plasmodium plasmodium causes the malaria in case of human beings so when this plasmodium is undergoing its life cycle inside the body of the human beings if there is one particular stage that is the spore like stage or the proto sporozoan stage so this sporozoan stage is highly infectious in nature. So that is called a sporozoans or the spore like stage. Now let us study about kingdom fungi. Kingdom fungi is one among those five kingdom classification which was proposed by Whittaker. So what are the characteristic features which comes under kingdom fungi? It is eukaryotic in nature. So that means to say it has got a definite nucleus, it has got a nuclear membrane and it has got the other cell organelles in it. Cell wall is present. So usually a cell contains the cell wall and what does the cell wall contains? The cell wall contains the chitin and polysaccharide. These are the main components which are present in the cell wall of the fungi. The next one is the nuclear membrane. So the nuclear membrane which is surrounding the nucleus is also present. The next one is the body organization. It is multicellular in nature. So there are many cells and these cells are present inside the fungi and they are present in a very, uh, in a very compact way. So they are multicellular in nature. Next one it is heterotrophic. So the mode of nutrition is it is heterotrophic. That means to say the kingdom fungi, the particular living organisms they are not able to prepare their own food as a result of which they are saprophytic or either parasitic. Saprophytic means the one which is feeding upon dead and decayed organic matter. Parasitic means the fungi which is living in a body of an another living organisms. So these are the characteristic features of the kingdom fungi and now they belong to five kingdom classification as per stated by Whittaker. So now let us study in elaborate way what are the characteristic features of kingdom fungi. So the first and the foremost important characteristic feature is its distribution. Kingdom fungi 
are distributed everywhere that means to say it is cosmopolitan in nature cosmopolitan cosmopolitan means it is found everywhere it is found in air it is found in soil it is found in water so in every places they are found so therefore kingdom fungi they are cosmopolitan in nature second important characteristic features they are mainly found in warm and humid places so the places where the temperature is little bit high and it is where it is quite humid in those places you can find the development of the fungi a little bit more the next one is antibiotics fungus are used in the development of the antibiotics so for example penicillium penicillium nutatum is the name of the fungus penicillium nutatum is the name of the fungus which helps in the production of the antibiotics like penicillin so penicillin is an antibiotic and this antibiotic is produced with the help of the fungus and that fungus is called as penicillium nutatum and what are the other characteristic features of fungi they are heterotrophic in nature so as i mentioned before they are heterotrophic in nature that means to say they cannot prepare their own food and there are few fungus which are actually harming the plants they might be a parasitic mode or they might be even present even in the body of the animals so mainly the fungus sometimes they act as a parasite they also cause the disease in the body of the plants like the white spots what you find beneath the leaves of the mustard plants so the white spots whatever you usually see in the mustard plant is nothing but the disease which is caused mainly by the fungus so what are the example for the fungus the examples for the fungus are mushrooms toadstools now what are toadstools toadstools are also some of resembling to that of the mushroom but they have a specific red color on their upper surface and usually toadstools are inedible that means to say they are toxic in nature whereas most of the time mushrooms are whitish in color and they are edible they are consumed most of the time but toadstools are not consumed the next example for this is orange rot orange rot are nothing but the white spots which you find it onto the surface of the oranges so these fungus even attacks the orange plant and these are called as orange rots so these are the different types of example which comes under kingdom fungi with respect to the fungus the fungus can be multicellular or unicellular in nature for example for with respect to the unicellular fungus it is the yeast yeast are unicellular fungus and the scientific name for the yeast is saccharomyces cerevisiae and what is the function of the yeast yeast are used in bakeries it is used to make the bread it is used to make the wine as well so now let's study about the morphology of the kingdom fungi so except the yeast all the remaining fungi are filamentous in nature so the all the fungus are filamentous in nature filamentous means long thread like structure and if you see the body of the fungus inside it is made up of hyphae what do you mean by hyphae the internal body organization has a long thread like structure so this long thread like structure is called as hyphae so 
when a spore germinates so this is a spore and when a spore germinates it will give rise to a long strand like structure so this long strand like structure so this has got some nucleus in between and it has got even the cytoplasm inside this so this long filament like structure is called as hyphae so this is called as hyphae a network of hyphae is called as mycelium so that means to say when the hyphae grows when it grows in number when it branches in number it give rise to mycelium so when the hyphae it divides rapidly and it forms a network when it forms a network like this then this is called as mycelium So now what is the difference between the hyphae and mycelium? Hyphae is a long filament thread like structure. It is only single and it is called as hyphae. And of course it contains the cytoplasm, it even contains the nucleus. Similarly is the mycelium, even it contains the cytoplasm and nucleus also. But the difference here is when there is a network of hyphae, when the hyphae it forms a network structure like this, then you are calling it to be mycelium. So both hyphae and mycelium is present inside the body of the fungi. Now if you want to have a vague idea of how the hyphae and mycelium looks like, let us consider an example of a mushroom plant. So this mushroom. This is the mushroom. So the hyphae and the mycelium, it will be like this. So both the hyphae and mycelium, it will be both interconnected and it form a loose thread like structure like this from the bottom to the topmost part. It will just spread rapidly like this throughout the body of the mushroom. So this is about the hyphae and mycelium. Sometimes some hyphae are continuous structure. They contain the cytoplasm and they contain the multinucleus. So if this is the hyphae, if this is the hyphae, the cytoplasm will keep on flowing. It will be continuous tube like structure. So this cytoplasm will be there, it will be flowing continuously like this and nucleus is present in it. So this form of hyphae is called as sinocytic hyphae. So this is In certain cases, the hyphae will have the cross walls or the septum in between them. This is called as septate hyphae. So let us consider this to be a hyphae and here as usual there is a cytoplasm and there are nucleus in between them. And in between this nucleus, there is a septum or a cross walls. So this type of hyphae is called as septate hyphae. You can call it as septum, so you can call this as septum. So this is septate hyphae, whereas you can, you can call this as a septate hyphae or sinocytic hyphae.
and the cell wall of the fungus is made up of two important components that is chitin and polysaccharide fungus are saprophytic in nature saprophytic means they are dependent upon the dead and decayed organic matter so the fungus can be saprophytic or it can be parasitic parasitic means the fungus which are living in the body of an another living organism and gradually this parasite it keeps on extracting all the nutrition from the body of the host and as the time proceeds finally the host will die of all the complications which has been arised by the fungus which was living inside its body so the mode of nutrition with respect to the fungi is it is saprophytic and it is parasitic in nature so the fungus is saprophytic and it can be even parasitic in nature in some cases the fungus also act as a symbionts or it is having a symbiotic association for example lichens so as we already know the fungus do not have the chlorophyll in them they are not able to make their own food as a result of which they are dependent upon the other living organisms so this fungus it will live so the fungus will live along with an algae so this combination together is called as lichens so what is lichen made up of lichen is made up of two important components first one it is made up of fungus and it is made up of algae together they always live together and this association between them is called as symbiosis now symbiosis means it is mutual mutualistic and it is compulsorily this both species they have to help each other they have to interact with each other and one species cannot live without the help of another species just like the fungus and the algae for the fungus to be alive because it is not able to prepare its own food it is dependent upon the algae and the algae in turn is dependent upon the fungus with respect to the shelter and even the fungus also transports the water and the mineral to the algae so in this way both the fungus and algae are interdependent upon each other so this sort of association is called as symbiosis so this is an example with respect to symbionts and an another example is fungus is present in the roots of the higher plants so fungus is present in the roots of the higher plants and this association is called as mycorrhiza so example for the root of the higher plants is tomato so in the roots of the tomato plant the fungus resides there so the fungus will be getting the nutrition from the uh, roots of the tomato plant and even the uh, tomato plant will in turn get the help from the fungus like all the pathogens which comes nearby the roots of the tomato plant it will be killed with the help of this fungus so here there is an interrelationship they help each other out and this type of association is called as symbiotic association in case of lichens it is the fungus and the algae and in case of mycorrhiza it is the fungus and the roots of the higher plants next is the reproduction in case of fungi fungi reproduces by means of vegetative propagation 
it can even reproduce by asexual reproduction as well as sexual reproduction. So there are three different types of reproduction even in case of fungi. So first let us discuss about the vegetative propagation. So what is vegetative propagation? In case of vegetative propagation there are three different types in which the fungi reproduces. So the first one is fragmentation, second one is fission and the third one is budding. So what do you mean by fragmentation? Fragmentation is a process in which the parent cell it breaks and it divides into different fragments. So when the parent cell breaks, into different fragments. And now each of these fragments will then develop into an independent individual. So this is an fragmentation. The next one is the fission. Fission is also the process in which a particular cell it splits and it divides into two. So when a single cell, if the single cell it splits and it divides into two then it is called as fission. The next one is budding. Budding is a process in which a small bud appears onto the surface of the cell. So if this is the cell a small bud if it appears onto the surface then this process is called as budding. So these are the three different types of vegetative propagation. It is a means of reproduction which is found in kingdom fungi. Asexual reproduction in fungi. So this is the second mode of reproduction. So, in case of asexual reproduction, spores are produced. Now, what are spores? Spores are round shaped structure. So, the round shaped structures are called as spores. And these spores are present in the air. It just, it is very light. So, therefore, it can just fly all along with the wind and it can germinate anywhere. And the most important part with respect to the spore is you have to always remember is spores are haploid in nature. So spores are always haploid in nature. So this is a very important point which you have to remember. Spores are round shaped structure. It has a protective outer layer covering and it is lightweight and it can easily fly away along with the wind and it can just germinate anywhere it finds the uh, perfect environment and depending upon which fungus it is to which fungus it is classified the spores are given the name conidia sporangiophores and zoospores so depending upon the type of fungi the spores are given their name okay so these are the three different types of spores you can find in different types of fungus The next one is the sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction in fungi, it gives rise to different types of spores depending upon the different types of fungi. So, oospores are produced, ascospores are produced, basidiospores are produced. These are the types of spores which are produced as a result of sexual reproduction. So, when the two mating or two compatible fungi when they come together they finally after the neotic division and after the formation of zygote it gives rise to spores. So these are those type of spores 
and these type of spores are produced in a particular structure or a fruiting body okay so these oospores are produced in a particular structure or a fruiting body ascospores are produced and even the basidiospores are produced so in order for this development of the spores they are, they need a structure where they have to be produced so these structures are called as fruiting bodies so now let's study about the sexual cycle in case of fungus the sexual cycle it involves three different steps the first one is the plasmogamy the second one is the karyogamy and the third one is the meiosis so what is plasmogamy now let us consider an example like when two different fungus are coming together during the process of mating you know when two hyphae are coming so this is one and this is an another one this is one strain this is an another strain of fungi when the two compatible mating type of the fungus when they are coming together then what happens so this is the nucleus and it has got the cytoplasm also inside it so the cytoplasm is also present inside this so when the two hyphae they come together and when they join there is an interaction between the protoplasm that is there is a fusion of the protoplasm between these two type of fungi so when here at this at this point when there is a fusion of the protoplasm you are calling it to be plasmogamy so what is plasmogamy plasmogamy is an interaction when two species of fungi which are of compatible mating type when they come together and when there is an exchange of the protoplasm this process is called as plasmogamy so the exchange of the protoplasm this point plasmogamy occurs and when there is a fusion of the nucleus taking place then you are calling it to be karyogamy so what is karyogamy karyogamy is a process when there is a fusion between two nucleus so when the fusion of the nucleus also takes place then you are calling it as karyogamy and once karyogamy has taken place then what happens then the meiosis start taking place the meiotic division takes place so the zygote which is formed now the meiosis start taking place which finally give rise to the spores so after the meiotic division so after the meiotic division of the karyogamy process which has just taken place then it give rise to spores and these spores are haploid in nature so the meiotic division it give rise to spores and these spores are haploid in nature so this is how the sexual cycle in case of fungus takes place in certain cases what happens is the two nuclei which come close to each other they don't fuse as a result of which one particular cell will have two nucleus in them this stage is called as dikaryotic stage so if we find in a single cell two nuclei so if two nucleus are found in a cell without fusion this process is called as dikaryotic stage in the later part of the stage sometimes they might get fused and they continue with their life cycle 